is from the normal population, we can't conclude otherwise. Now in the second data set, uh, where you actually see, I guess I'll mention briefly, the reason why this is not a realistic example or use of the, of the one sample t-test is that if you know the population mean, then you would know the population standard deviation as well. I just can't think of a realistic case where you know the population mean and you don't know the population standard deviation as well, which would imply that you should be using a one sample z test rather than a one sample t test. If people come across examples, please send them to me or write a comment underneath this video and uh, let me know about an example where you know the population mean but not the population standard deviation. Now, in the second case, which is a realistic, I think, a more realistic use of the one sample t test, it's where you have item data and uh, you have a sample. In this case here, there's a sample of 144 people who responded to an item on a five-point Likert scale. Let's just say it's something like, I am satisfied with life, and it varies from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And I'll look, let's look at the distribution of the data here to see what this looks like. And we'll get the statistics as well, the mean and standard deviation, but not the frequency table. Okay, so this is what these IQ data look like. So here, a lot of people strongly disagree to strongly agree. So in this case here, a lot of people are unhappy. Uh, and the mean is 3.69, so somewhere between 3 and 4. And let's just say 3 is uh, neither happy nor unhappy, or something like that, a neutral point. And you want to test the hypothesis that your sample is scoring above the neutral point on this item. Well, in this case, we could perform a one-sample t-test. At least you see many people, uh, not many, but when you do see the one-sample t-test used in a way that I think is uh, sensible, uh, you would see somebody comparing an item at the midpoint, and in this case, it's three. So I want to test a hypothesis that this sample of 140 people are scoring above the midpoint of three. The mean is 3.69. So how would I do that? You do it the same way as the first one. Go into compare means, one sample t-test. Whoops, I've got the wrong data set. I'll get rid of that one. So here's my other data set. Go into analyze, compare means, one sample t-test. And I've got the rounded va variable. Let's just say it was item four. And I click on three as my test value. I want to see if this item, which is scored at 3.69, is going to be higher than the midpoint of three. So I click on OK. And the null hypothesis is rejected because this significance uh, level is less than 0 0.05. In fact, it's less than 0 0.001. So it's a t-value of 7.416, degrees of freedom of 143, and a significance level of 0 0.00. In fact, it's probably, I can see how much further it goes. I don't think it's going to be even apparent once I increase now. So it's very statistically significant, p less than 0 0.001. Uh, so I've rejected the null hypothesis. So this sample of data are scoring significantly above the midpoint of three. And that, those are the two ways I see the one sample t-test used. The first one, I think, is probably more consistent with a one sample z-test scenario, which I encourage you to check out uh, the how-to stats video on how to do that in SPSS. It's actually uh, not obvious how to do that in SPSS. Uh, but the one sample t-test is more obvious. But I think the second example is how you would actually see, uh, is the more sensible way of, of uh, applying the one sample t-test. Maybe there are other cases. Please uh, write a comment or send me a message on uh, interesting uses of the one sample t-test.